Hi everybody, my name is Kim Rice and uh, we live here in Macomb. I live here in Macomb with my husband Tim, my two children, uh, Cade and Della. And I'm really excited to have the opportunity tonight to talk to you about what voting means to me and why it's so important that we celebrate women's suffrage and so important that we as women continue to participate in our electoral system. So what you see on the screen in front of you is actually four sources that I was going to point to um, as we just have a conversation. But first I wanted to share the story with you of my first time voting. Um, when I was first asked to do this video, I started to think about the first time that I was able to vote. I had uh, just turned 18 that past late August. I was actually going into my sophomore year of college. Um, at University of Wisconsin-Madison, and I remember walking to the polls with my roommate, Erin, and somewhere in my house right now, there is a picture of me in front of my polling place for the first time, and I tried desperately to dig it out for you all, and I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, I did find a lot of pictures of really bad 80s and 90s hairstyles and fashion, but no picture of my first time voting, but it, it's floating around here somewhere. I remember being so excited. Um, I remember thinking the process was pretty easy. The wait wasn't too bad, even though it was you know busy downtown campus area in Madison. But then I got home and I uh, actually went to uh, an election party and then came home from an election party and then stayed up and watched and then watched some more and then eventually went to bed maybe three in the morning and by the time we woke up the next morning we still didn't have a president. So if you haven't already guessed, my first election that I voted in was 2000 in Bush v. Gore and this went on. This controversy went on uh, until uh, the Supreme Court sort of decided that the uh, method of recounting in Florida was unconstitutional and that the recount would be halted and thus, you know, thereby making uh, George W. Bush president. And so if there was ever an interesting election to be your first election, it was probably my first election. Um, so I wanted to also just kind of take you guys through a couple of other resources. So first of all, if you ever think that your vote doesn't matter, which I know a lot of us, especially in the, the negative political climate right, right now, the adversarial political climate, the downright nasty political climate sometimes, we often think that our vote isn't going to matter, that it's not important. And even sometimes we think it's not important as if we think our candidate is a lock. Right. We certainly saw people who voted differently than maybe they would have had they known how close things would be between President Trump and Hillary Clinton last time. So the first thing, this is just a quick little article from National Geographic about why voting is important. And it talks about Bush v. Gore and it talks about Trump v. Clinton and how close even large national elections have been. But it's not even just those large national elections. Many of the statewide and down ballot local elections will have smaller voting pools in your vote truly matters. It truly does matter to have your vote counted. Um, and so it's really, really important that we ensure that we're going out and getting out the vote this year. The second thing I wanted to share with you is one of my favorite sources about women's suffrage, because I think oftentimes people think the 19th Amendment was passed and everybody just sort of gave the right to vote and, and it was widespread. But the reality is, is that actually in many states, women had the right to vote or at least someone had the right to vote. Um, and so if you look at Illinois here, it's green and green meaning the women actually before the 19th Amendment, in fact, as early as 1913, had the ability to vote at least for president. And some states, women already had full voting rights. And so Idaho, California had full voting rights before the 19th Amendment. And then you might see some regional patterns here that would maybe still be uh, illustrative today. In a lot of the South, there were no right, rights for women until the 19th Amendment was passed. So it's always interesting to think about how women and the suffrage movement um, attacked the idea of should we go with this from uh, state to state or should we attack this um, nationally as, as a constitutional amendment? And ultimately, the Constitution was amended and that was the more successful strategy. Moving forward, of course, to today then, we want to continue to talk about the fact that it's incredibly important for people to vote. And it's also really important for us as women to remember the power that we have as voters. And so a big part of that, um, if you look at the Pew Research Center article from 2019, that in the last midterms, women were and continued to vote at higher rates than men. And in many battleground states, women and the gender gap in voting was the key to who won and who lost races. There's never um, 
There's never been a more important time for people, and, and especially people in uh, generally conceived of minority groups, to go out and get out the vote. And if you're interested in voting for female candidates, then you can go to the last resource that I have listed here. And this is from Rutgers, and it's the Center for American Women in Politics. And there's some great information here. And you can even just look up what female candidates by your state if you want to, and then by the, the district, and then um, um, they have their primary, um, whether they won or lost their primary, and then their party. And if you click on any of their names, you'll be taken to their uh, campaign website. So we'll look at Sherry Bustos, right? Uh, someone that most of us are familiar with. And then you'll be able to look forward and see and if you even need to, to contact, to donate, to get um, information about that individual. There's also some really great summary information um, on this page. So summary of women candidates here. There's also an election watch. So this would be a good place to go if you want to keep track of female candidates in 2020. And you get a summary of um, different levels of government. Right? You can see in the U.S. Senate, right, how many women currently hold office, right, how many are filing, what we think likely candidates are, how many are still in the running. Uh, the U.S. Senate primaries and whether people are running as Republicans or Democrats. Um, Senate candidates by state, right? So you can definitely see in right, Illinois, there's a woman of either party running and there's an incumbent running. And so you can see how different states have different breakdowns and even by the parties. So this is a really great resource that's put out there by uh, the Rutgers and Institute of Politics and the Center for American Women in Politics that will help you to track female candidates if you're interested in seeing how women overall are doing in terms of vote shares. So again, my name is Kim Rice. I look forward to voting this year in Illinois with all of you. And I thank you for the opportunity today to share some of my story of my first time voting and why I think it's incredibly important that we all get out and vote this year.